Hello everyone, the Instant Camera Guy here with a, another mini episode that's going to feature my Polaroid, the button. Uh, those that follow my channel might remember this camera from where I, uh, in the video where I compared it against Polaroid's current flagship camera, the i2. And one of the things that I mentioned in that video is that this particular version of the button, despite originally being released for SX-70 film, has been modified to take uh, Polaroid i-type film. And the way that I did that is I added the AAA battery compartment on the rear of the camera, and I electronically modified the capacitor in the electric eye with one that was one quarter the size, which speeds up the effective aperture and shutter speed system, thus making this camera expose perfectly for 600 or i-type film. Now, in that video, I also featured some shots taken with a flash. And that is because this particular flash on the button has also been modified to take Polaroid 600 film. And that is what I wanted to talk about today. How to modify a flash, uh, and I'm going to show you guys two methods that you can do it, so that the flash takes 600 speed film instead of SX-70. Now, you might think for yourself for a second, well, hang on a minute. If the camera is already converted to 600 film, why do you also need to modify the flash? And, well, that's because when you use a flash to control the exposure of a camera, the electric eye inside the SX-70, whether it's an SLR or a simple box type camera like this, gets completely turned off. When you insert a flash into the top terminal, these two contacts become bridged which basically acts as a switch and tells the camera we are no longer shooting in automatic mode, we are going to shoot at one fixed speed. And that's very handy for flash. So when you insert a flash, the shutter is firing at a fixed speed and it's actually the power of the flash that di dictates the exposure. So SX-70 flashes are generally rather large. They have very large capacitors which store a high amount, of, well, a large amount of electricity. And that electricity is sent through a little xenon tube which produces an electronic flash burst, which fires at about one thousandth of a second. So if your flash exposes for SX-70 film, well, doesn't matter what the camera's doing, it's effectively turned off. So you're going to be exposing for SX-70 film too, and thus you will need SX-70 film unless the camera is, well, sorry, unless the flash, I should say, is modified. So what I wanted to do in this video is show you two ways that you can do that. The first way is very simple and it involves ND filter material which I'm going to grab in just a second. And the second method involves swapping the actual main flash capacitor. One mod is very easy, the other one is a bit more involved, um, but both of them will ultimately produce the same kind of results. So let's do a little cut and come back in a second. Now, many of you watching may be familiar with pack film filters. So these are basically sheets of ND material that would go over the top of an image, be taped or secured down into place, and then reduce the amount of light going from the camera onto the film, thus allowing you to shoot 600 film inside an SX-70. And the reason that that works is this piece of filter material reduces light by a factor of two stops, or in other words, by a factor of four. Now, if we take this same ND filter material, and put it over the lens of the flash, well, it's going to reduce the output by a factor of four. And so that is one way that you can modify a camera's flash to shoot 600 film, if it's set for SX-70. Here I have an example of one where I've done just that. You guys might be able to see, this is a very similar type of flash by the way, it was made by the same a uh, Hong Kong based third party accessories manufacturer. See how I've internally tinted the camera uh, on the right hand side. So the flash lens itself has been tinted. Now that's because I opened up this flash unit, cut a piece of this into the precise shaped rectangle and I actually put it inside behind the piece of plastic so that it's an internal modification. But if you wanted to do it much easier than that, you could simply get some sticky tape and just tape a piece of filter material to the front, especially if you didn't want it to be such a permanent modification. So 
That's very easy to do. It basically just involves dismantling the flash, taking the lens apart, cutting a rectangle of ND material to size, and putting it back together again. The other thing that I wanted to show you was a capacitor mod. So inside the camera's flash, and you guys are going to see it in a second, is a large capacitor designed for storing a big electronic charge, a big electrical charge. And it's this capacitor here that stores a charge and then dumps that charge through the xenon tube, producing the flash. So if we take out the very large capacitor that's already in this flash unit and replace it with one that's one quarter of the microfarad value, well, we're going to get a flash that now exposes for 600 film instead of SX70. So when it comes to capacitors, um, each model of flash, and as I said before, these flashes are produced by a third party. Uh, there were a Hong Kong based company that would make flash units for various retailers in the USA. In the case of the button, it was actually sold in JC Penney stores. And I happen to have realized I actually have the original box for this flash as well. It is definitely sold by JC Penney. Inside it says there is one strobe. Uh, the exact model number is on the side here. It's got the category number, uh, catalog number, I should say. And here are some of the information if you guys want to take a screenshot. Basically, it fires the flash over a duration of one thousandth of a second, and it apparently had a charge time of ten seconds. Now, if we swap the capacitor from this, as I said, it's going to uh, be converted to take 600 film, provided that we use one of the right values. So what this means is you generally will need to take the flash apart and figure out the original value of the capacitor. Now I happen to know from experience, because I've already converted the capacitor in this one, which is why the lens isn't tinted, that the capacitor that's in here is about a 330 volt 700 microfarad unit. So if we want to get one that's one quarter the power, the closest I could find was 180 microfarads. Now, this capacitor here that I've got, the new one, is rated at 450 volt. So you might look at those numbers and think, hmm, that's not very compatible. But when it comes to capacitors, the voltage uh, is basically an indicator of how much voltage the capacitor can take before it's going to explode. So that means that this capacitor here is rated up to a hundred, up to 450 volts. So this is a 450 volt 180 UF or 180 microfarad capacitor. In this capacitor, uh, it's only rated to 330 volts. So basically the higher the voltage, the safer the capacitor is to use. And these days, as far as I can find online, it seems that a lot of manufacturers don't really make 350 volts anymore. They usually go up to 450. It's a far more common value to find. You can still, of course, find 330 and 350, and of course it'll still work, but I opted to go with 450 in this case, just to give me a bit of extra peace of mind. In this use case, 450 versus 350 isn't going to make any difference, so I opted for the higher voltage rating, just because it's a bit safer. Uh, but yes, it is 180 UF, which is roughly a quarter of 700, so this will work just fine. Now the other thing that I'm going to do, uh, because what I plan on doing here is opening up this flash. So this is the Kmart version of the exact same flash. As I said, these particular flash units were sold by third party retailers. Uh, if you wanted Polaroid's official flash, you would have bought one of these, which is a Q-Lite. Now, this is very similar. The original capacitor that's in the Q-Lite is even larger again, being rated at about 1000 microfarads. You can see here I opted to tint this one to convert it, but either way is going to work fine. You might be wondering, after I've just shown off a few tinted examples, well, if ND filter material is cheap, why am I bothering with the electronic conversion. And well, there's a simple way to answer that, and that's that the electronics in these flashes are from the 1980s. They're very old, 40 years old at least. And what that means, um, electronics has come a long way in terms of technology, um, reliability, like capacitors have improved a lot if you compare like a modern capacitor to one from the 80s. And 
One of the big advantages, being that this one is a quarter of the size, the charge duration is also a quarter of the size. In fact, the flash that is in my Polaroid button is practically instantaneous charge. Check this out. <laughs> it's ready in literally a second. No waiting 10 seconds for the flash to charge. It's like instantaneous, absolutely amazing. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I wanna show you guys exactly what to do in terms of swapping out a capacitor. Now, obviously the example that I'm giving is gonna be for this particular flash unit, but the process is very similar for different flashes. The main thing that you wanna make sure of is that the original capacitor that you pull out, the new one that you get, is about the same physical size. If you're going with one that's a quarter the value, it's likely gonna be shorter than say if you had a capacitor that was a higher value. See, this one's about uh, 500 microfarads, this one's only 180. So uh, odds are you're gonna end up with one that's a bit smaller, but you want one that's roughly gonna be the same size that will at least fit inside the camera because capacitors come in many different uh, shapes and sizes. So you wanna make sure that you're buying the right one, especially when you're looking at sort of electronics catalogs online, they're not always very clear from the photos. Do read the uh, specifications. The other thing that I wanted to say before I start this modification is do not attempt this at home if you are not familiar with electronics. You absolutely can be electrocuted if you don't know what you're doing, uh, and especially if you touch a capacitor that is charged. So the card's gonna come out. This is a rather complex repair. Only attempt this if you have good experience with a soldering iron and you know how to use a screwdriver well, and you know how to use all safety precautions. The capacitor absolutely must be discharged if you're going to attempt any work on this, lest you be electrocuted. And although an electrocution from a flash capacitor very likely won't kill you, it certainly does not tickle. It hurts quite a bit, kind of like a taser. And funny that, it's electricity after all. The way that I like to discharge capacitors like this is by using a household light globe. This is one designed for an oven. And basically what I do is just using two bits of wire, I attach them to the positive and negative of the capacitor. And if there's any charge, the light is gonna burn uh, and turn on basically. And that's how I get rid of voltage in a flash capacitor. This bulb is 240 volt and that's roughly what the transformer in these things output. So what I'm gonna do is take this apart. So I need my little Phillips head screwdriver. The other thing that I'm gonna go ahead and do, and I'm gonna do this because I know it happens to be in there, but on the inside on the PCB in this capacitor is also in, inside this flash. On the PCB inside this flash is another capacitor, which I believe has to do with the trigger circuitry. I'm just gonna replace it because there are only two electrolytic capacitors on this entire board. And I know that one is also 40 years old, both capacitors are gonna be old. I'm gonna swap this one just to be thorough. It's not a quarter of the size, it's the same size capacitor that I'm replacing it with. But since I'm opening it up inside anyway, I might as well. So that's why I'm doing that, but it's not strictly necessary. If you wanna reduce the output, the only main capacitor you have to, to change is the very big one that's inside there. And you'll see it, it's the one that's friggin' huge. So. I'm gonna be removing the four screws. This capacitor has, oh, this capacitor, well, the capacitor has no charge, and that is because this flash has not been turned on for months. There is absolutely no chance that it is currently holding an electrical charge. And as a result, this thing is safe to work on. So out comes the battery door and the two halves of the flash, there we go, we separate like so. Now, I've tinted this lens, so the first thing I want to do is remove my tint, uh, because it's just going to get in the way. So, uh, I could desolder this bottom panel, but I'm going to leave it. There's a little catch here on the test button, I want to make sure that stays out of the way. I'm just going to quickly lift this lens and get rid of my little little rectangle of filter material. Here we go. Put the lens back on before any dust 
can get in there. Easy. There we go. It should just all clip into place. And then I just want to slide that back in. Oh, probably need to lift the PCB to do this. A little bit fiddly. There we go. And we are in. The flash lens is back and in place. What I'm going to do now is lift the circuit board over to the side and here we've got the gigantic <laughs> original capacitor. You can see how big this is. And basically what I'm going to be doing is desoldering this from the circuit board. So my soldering iron is off to the side here. It is nice and hot. I'm just going to show you guys again how I would discharge the capacitor. I've got my light globe. I've got, I think this is like 10 amp cable, so it's going to be completely fine and safe. But yeah, just touching positive and negative. But as you can see, there's no charge in this capacitor because I haven't turned it on for months. So it's totally safe to work on. But had I just been firing this flash, you bet your butts that I would be discharging that, that cap. So I'm just going to stand up the capacitor here. I'm sorry if you guys can't see what I'm doing. But there's only two wires that go to it, one red and one black. Obviously red being positive, black being negative. And this flash is in good working order. Um, there's no corrosion on battery terminals or anything like that. It does work nicely. The terminals on this flash capacitor are fairly large, so it'll take a time, a little bit of time for the solder to get hot enough. There we go, but it will release eventually. And yeah, here we go. One Rubicon 330 volt, 700 microfarad, uh, microfarad, microfarad capacitor. We'll just put that over to the side. And this is the new one that we'll be installing. Uh, the other thing I will do is just remove the other small capacitor, which I'm going to be replacing. Uh, this capacitor has to do with power supply uh, going to and coming from the actual transformer, which converts the six volts worth of batteries to, I think, about 240 volts. So I'm just going to remove this one. As I said before, you don't need to. I know that it works. I'm mainly doing it out of OCD because I'm already inside the camera anyway. Why the heck not? So what I'm going to do here is just use a whole bunch of solder wick and remove a whole bunch of the solder from the legs holding in that little capacitor and then we'll yank it out, put in a new one. Now the cool thing about these old flashes, they're generally pretty easy to work on because these old electronics usually use lead solder, which is nice and easy to melt. Uh, and the, the traces on the PCB, as you guys can see, are very large. So, although it might seem scary to work on something with such high voltage, uh, these are actually arguably slightly easier to work on for beginners. So I'm just going to keep doing this, getting rid of all the, the solder holding the cap legs on. The replacement capacitors, uh, what I'd recommend, buy a good name brand capacitor. Uh, Rubicon, Nichicon, Panasonic are all very good. I've opted to go with Worth capacitors. So uh, I'm not sure if it's pronounced Worth or Vert. They are a German brand. Their capacitors are renowned for being very good, but most importantly, very reliable. They also operate at like very high temperatures comparative to other brands usually, which is a nice bonus. Uh, right, let's make sure. The other thing I want to do is just make sure I'm marking where the negative goes on this PCB. So negative is facing towards me. So I'll just mark a little negative here because it doesn't say it on the PCB. And that's just going to save me from mounting it in the wrong way. Uh, you don't want to get the positive and negative mixed up on a capacitor or it'll explode. Come on. Sometimes with soldering, you, you really do need three hands. 
There we go. Now this should pull out now. There we go. So that's the old one removed, and I'll be installing the new one. So the new one, the negative is the stripe, so that's going to go facing me. New capacitor is going in, I'm just going to bend the leg over to the side, snip the excess off the leg. Just like so. Make sure that they're all pushed down and then we can apply fresh solder. So I just double check again. Yep, negative is on the outside. Capacitor is sitting in there nice and straight. Time for the best part, which is adding the new solder. Great. All right. Now, to install the new capacitor. Now, I tend to find, uh, oh, you do have to watch, by the way, these, uh, these flashes have little guards that go on the switches. One's for the power button and one is for the high and low functionality. So make sure you don't lose them because they are just sitting in there loose. So I'm just going to put them back and in place. Now the wires for the new capacitor are a little short. I tend to find the best way to hold them in place is to blue tack the capacitor to the PCB and then I can just poke the wires and, and push them in place. Uh, but the first thing that I'm going to do, a little bit of blue tack in the center, I'm just going to tin the little legs on the new capacitor. The other cool thing about Worth capacitors, they're bright red. Um, and not a lot of capacitors are any different colors other than black, really. Um, it's actually pretty unusual. Now, this big capacitor does have a negative stripe, so you know exactly which leg goes to negative. A lot of big flash capacitors also have this kind of like crisscrossy knurled finish. If I can get the camera to focus, hello. Is that focusing? Yeah, it's got like a knurled finish on the tip and that indicates negative too. So uh, once you know that, you really can't screw it up. What I like to do is, yeah, just use a bit of blue tack to hold it in place. Uh, blue tack, very handy stuff when it comes to soldering. I highly recommend you keep some in your toolkit because it's so much nicer to use than those little claw machines because you can really mold it to any shape you please. All right. So I'm, I'm trying to do this <laughs> whilst still capturing it on camera. Um, maybe if I sit it down like so, can you guys see what I'm doing? I'm putting the black lead on first. So I've tinned both sides of the wire. Uh, this is a lot easier to do when you're not trying to capture it on camera, I must say. It's one side on. Let me just inspect the solder joint there. Yeah, looking good. And I'll just pop on the red lead now as well on the positive. Good. Wonderful. Positive and negative, both connected. We can now remove the blue tack that's holding everything together if it wants to come off. Yeah, 
There we go. All traces of blue tech removed. And honestly, the trickiest part is now putting it all back together. Um, one of the things we're going to have to do here, um, this capacitor, once it goes into its little spot, we will very likely find um, it's too small and it's going to jiggle around. So what I'm going to be doing is putting a little piece of foam in here just to stop it from moving. So I'm just going to cut this to size with a big pair of scissors. This is some uh, high density foam that I got in some like, packing material and it's very handy to keep around for things like this. I've got another nice chunk of it here which I'm just going to cut into a little length that I'm going to put into here. So here we go. Just in between the flash lens there and the capacitor and that now can't go anywhere. This part of the PCB is going to press on top and it's going to be held in place on all four sides. And yeah, it's basically just a matter now of making sure everything goes back together again. Uh, one of the things I'm going to have to do is just reset the flash lens here because it has come undone. Just in me fiddling around with everything, it just fell off. There we go. And it's just going to make sure there's like a little mark here. I just want to make sure it's not dust. No, it's just in the plastic. I thought so. Right. Clipped in. Clipped in. Oh, I'll remove that. There we go. And we can put our little bit of foam back in there just in between that flash lens and the capacitor. Great. Okay. Now let's make sure all the little plastic guards are on place. So here is the on off switch. So we'll put the correct guard for that one on. Then the little plastic guard for the high and low switch and should just be a matter now of aligning the two halves of the circuit board and making sure everything goes in place. Uh, the other thing I've got to do is make sure that the test button that fires the flash uh, lines up with its little plastic post. Yep, there it goes. That's in. And make sure that all other wires are not obstructing any of the screw holes. So that is all sitting nicely. And then it's just a matter of, uh, yeah, tucking the wires in, putting it back together. So yeah, it's a bit of a fiddly job to do something like this. Um, I, I could have made it a tiny bit easier on myself if I had desoldered the two uh, the two wires that went to the little flash connection there. But I mean, it adds a bit of extra time for reducing a bit of fiddliness. So it's all swings and roundabouts, just making sure all the switches work. And yeah, that is basically it. It's clipped together nicely. What I want to do now is just put all the screws in place. And then we can turn this thing on. Now with the screws in place, what I want to do, just shake it, make sure nothing's rattling around in there, make sure that capacitor is staying in place and it does sound like it is. It is after all surrounded on all six sides, like a cube whether it be foam, plastic, or PCB, it's completely surrounded. And what I'm going to do now is just take off my button flash, take the batteries out of this, and give this new one a test. 
I am using Kratex 1.5 volt buck converted lithium cells in order to do this. I find these work really well with flashes and they are rechargeable, which is a really nice bonus. All right. Well, there we have it, folks. One 600 converted flash. We can see the little ready light comes on. And uh, yeah, this is ready to take some 600 or I-type photos. And of course, it's gonna go on the matching Kmart branded uh, BC Series One Step, which is the uh, uh, BC Series was the name of Kmart's photography division. So this would have been the camera uh, sold exclusively at Kmart stores. And this flash uh, is the exact same flash as the JC Penny version, which was branded for the button, um, but it's branded as focal. And if you look very closely, it actually has a tiny little Kmart logo in the corner. So uh, yeah, we have the Kmart edition flash and camera. But yeah, I hope uh, this video has been helpful to you guys. Uh, if, uh, if you want any of your flashes converted to take SX-70 film, please hit me up. Uh, I'm actually selling a few one-step cameras with converted flashes and the iType mod already done. So if you want one of those and it's, you know, not five years after this video gets released, hit me up because I might still have one for sale. And uh, yeah, as always, if you want me to repair something of yours, feel free to hit me up. Or if you just simply like what I do, links are below to send a donation my way via my coffee account. Uh, hopefully you found this video educational. Um, the last thing I will touch on is the Mint Flash Bar, which you can purchase brand new, has both settings. So full power for SX-70 film, and it, it's a half symbol, but actually it's quarter power if you're shooting 600 speed film. Um, but obviously, if you don't want to go out of your way and purchase a brand new flash, you can quite easily adapt the old units uh, to take more modern film. It's actually a relatively trivial process. Um, new capacitors aren't particularly cheap. Uh, I think the ones that I installed into this camera, they only sold in lots of two, and I think they are about 13 Australian dollars each just for the capacitors. So it's uh, and then you've got to pay shipping on top of that. So if you do want to do something like this on your own, you may be looking at a good $40 just to acquire the parts. But in my opinion, it is very worth it. Um, if only for that quick charge time, hey? <laughs> you like turn it on and it's instantaneously charged. Absolutely crazy. Anyway, until next time, may all of your photos come out perfectly exposed and perfectly composed. And I'll see you in the next video.